This is the weekend edition of I-501 News, where we present some of the top stories from this week and your weekend weather forecast. And coming up here in the Weather Center, we'll look at a wet, windy, wild weekend. The four W's coming our way. We'll have all the details coming up shortly. Stay tuned for more of the weekend edition of i Fiber one News. From the i Fiber one HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i Fiber one News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is i Fiber one News, and it starts now. One of our top stories this week was about a retired physicist in Soap Lake. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. When he's not working with the webcams from his home on West Beach in Soap Lake, Dave Hoffman is a man of the universe and the fascinating stuff that goes along with it. It takes eight minutes for light to get from the sun to the earth, and so when we see the sun rise, it rose eight minutes ago. How far away is the known universe? Uh, the edge of the known universe is about at a distance of about 13.8 billion light years if light travels at a constant speed of 186,000 miles a second. The Soap Lake raised and educated retiree ended up teaching math, astronomy, and physics at Wenatchee High School and Wenatchee Valley College for 20 years. Then he worked for Apple Computers as the education technology consultant for Eastern Washington. He installed and taught Apple technology to some 3,000 educators. Today, he'll speak to any community group that will listen to The universe is immense and amazing, and people wonder about, well, if galaxies collide, well, what happens? You know, well, the stars are so far apart, they just pass right by one another. They may cause gravitational effects and distortions, and we observe all that. And, it, it, it's just beautiful to see the photographs. He still keeps his mind sharp and on the creative edge, doing community side projects, such as building an archive of past Soap Lake school annuals and class reunion information for the Soap Lake School's website. About four or five uh, presentations, PowerPoint keynote presentations that uh, are on the field of astronomy. Uh, started with one on uh, the size of the universe called Powers of Ten, and then did another one on the solar system and nebula and stars. And then the one that I'm going to be showing in January is uh, on the Milky Way, galaxies, and the universe. In his presentations, Dave describes the universe and its vastness, something we often take for granted. Just want to share the information, and uh, I post a lot of stuff on the internet, uh, on Facebook about astronomy, and I have develop programs for the schools to use in the area of astronomy and science to get kids and, and people basically interested. They need to know about the universe we live in. Some of his talks involve his love of the stars and galaxies, subjects he loves to talk about with the community groups. Voyager spacecrafts uh, that left 30 some years ago have just recently left what is basically considered the heliosphere of the sun, the influence of the sun. They're out there traveling 40,000 miles an hour and it's taken them 40 years just to get out past Pluto. If your group would like Dave Hoffman to talk about the universe, he can be reached at dph at ifiber.tv. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Earlier this week, funding for the remodeling of the Moses Lake District Court was in question at a Grant County Commissioner's meeting. And here with that story is Courtney Vasquez. Remodeling the Moses Lake District Court has been delayed after the Grant County Commissioners received an estimated cost. The Commissioners met with architects David Schott and Gail Britt from the DOH Associates. Schott and Britt estimated the remodel will cost more than two million dollars. The Commissioners agreed that they can't afford the price. Commissioner Cindy Carter said they budgeted the project between $250,000 and $270,000. Tom Gaines, the facilities and maintenance manager, said the building contains asbestos in the ceilings. Gaines said there are also issues with the building's roof and plumbing. The Grant County Commissioners plan on looking at their options before making a final decision. For i One News, I'm Courtney Vasquez. Thank you, Courtney.
Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the Department of Corrections asks that you do not attempt to detain or apprehend them but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. We'll be right back after this. Ready for some classy, laid-back fun? Imbibe in Moses Lake is a place for you. Imbibe has a huge selection of your favorite wine and beer on tap from local brewers. We have kegs to go, and we can fill your growler. Remember that summertime is beer time. Come enjoy our live music on Fridays, and make sure to reserve a spot for private parties. What are you waiting for? This is a place to enjoy your favorite drinks with your favorite people. Find us on 3rd Avenue in Moses Lake, Washington, or call us at 509-765-1119. Are you worried that your home might not meet today's safety standards? Eastern Washington Home Inspection standards for home safety are among the highest in the industry. We provide the highest level of inspection service and provide a detailed report with digital photos of any structural damage or other problems that might make your home unsafe. Our head inspector, Dennis Chamberlain, along with his son, Cody, are fully qualified inspectors who make your safety their priority. We inspect for your peace of mind. Call us at 509-347-6425. Well, hi there, everybody. Meteorologist Don Morello with you here on iFiber Channel 1 News. Hope you had a great Friday. Your weather forecast is brought to you by your Bud Cleary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. High wind watch remains in effect, especially on Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday. We're looking for wind speeds 25, 35 miles an hour on average, but gusting possibly higher than 50. And you know that could put down some power lines, maybe some trees. So, again, watch that out. It could be a rather interesting weekend. Some improvement, albeit slight, during the first half of Sunday, but still pretty breezy right through the weekend. 49 degrees and 22 of the extremes today. Now you're wondering, how did we fall to 22 degrees? It was a mild start. Well, that was around the midnight hour last night. Temperatures actually rose through the overnight hours last night. 34 degrees, that was what the temperature was around midnight last night. Clouds coming on in and winds picking on up. 34 degrees in Moses Lake, 49, almost clipping that 50 degree mark before the clouds and a little shower activity now moving on into the vicinity. 44 degrees currently, 31 degree dew point. Look at this wind. Yep, already picking up. And the main storm is far away, believe it or not. Taking a look at the satellite picture, you can see the moisture coming into the coast, squeezing out a little bit in the Cascades, but some are now making a cross into the basin. Main storm center is out west, and again, we'll watch this as it continues to progress eastward. Again, the main storm center here, but by Saturday morning, look, it's still a big band. And as that moves across, the winds will pick up uh, Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, Sunday morning, especially Saturday night, the wind speed is probably the strongest. The main storm center moving across, dissipating a little bit as it moves into British Columbia or south of that, so we'll be on the mild side of this for the most part. Still some more moisture bands coming in, even into Sunday night into Monday morning possibly, before we really dry it out by the work week again, Monday afternoon, Tuesday. In the meantime, the state forecast specifically, 40s for the most part, for most areas, and very windy and very heavy rains. Snow levels around 3,000 feet, but that'll be rising overnight tonight. Inland Northwest, you saw temperatures upper 30s, lower 40s, so even there, mainly liquid unless you get higher up in the elevations. And here in the Columbia Basin, we're looking for, again, temperatures generally into the 40s, not too bad, but again, very, very windy and wild. Speaking of which, windy and wild on our Saturday, 47 degrees, 42 on Sunday. Some clearing during the afternoon, but still a shower threat. Mild on Monday, and that above normal temperature theme will continue right into next week, right through the work week. And really no big chance of precipitation once we get through this. Although there are some signs Thursday, but I'm being optimistic right now. Keep the showers away. Well, take it easy this weekend. Have an enjoyable weekend, everybody. Keep it here. Sports is next. Build anything with the new Toyota Tundra. Toyota, let's go places. At High Mountain Hunting Supply, we have a saying that guides us. 
If we won't use it in the field, we won't sell it in the store. We take that seriously. Every gun, every rod, every bow that we sell is a product you can feel confident will help you land the biggest fish or harvest the biggest game. Our experts will help you find the right product for your needs. Come see us at 12238 North Frontage Road in Moses Lake or 223 North Mission in Wenatchee. High Mountain Hunting Supply, your source for hunting and fishing. Welcome back. Our next story is about a woman's war with heavy rain in Soap Lake. Here's Jeff Chu with the story. Mona Kaiser, whose home in Soap Lake was flooded after the city designed and rebuilt Main Avenue West, is awaiting a city decision that could lead to drainage improvements in front of her property. Kaiser described unusually heavy rains in May that flooded her yard and part of her home. The sudden storm caused rising waters four years after the road project's completion. Back in May, mid-May, mid we got some really uh, heavy rains. And um, the first one that caused the problem, I happened to be working outside, and I, I really like gardening. And so I was doing finishing up. I kept, kept on going, kept on going, and then I noticed that the water was seeping in my driveway. And I thought, oh my gosh, the stormwater drains must be stuffed up. The water washed into her low-lying driveway and flower bed, then down the side of her yard into her basement shop. So I ran up the street with a stick to try to uncover them, and none of them were blocked from the water going down there. But then the water starts coming from up the little bit of a hill there is, mm -hmm. and actually from across the street, because the cross the street is actually higher than what I am. It, it just went through my, it was heading down to the lake, lower, heading down to lower ground, and it amazed me how much it built up in that little area to really knock rocks away from the house and bark out of the beds and, and down, down into the shop. The next day after the flood, she wrote a letter to the city and talked to the council at a public meeting in December after discussions with Soap Lake Mayor Raymond Gravel. She told the council how she was affected by the road project's redesign. I found out what it was all about is that I was really in, ended up being the low person on the street. Mayor Raymond Gravel said the city was awaiting an assessment from city engineering consultants Gray and Osborne. A representative from the consultant firm met with Kaiser at her home. Gravel said possible solutions include replacing Kaiser's driveway, changing its elevation, or installing a storm drain at the front of her property. It would be up to Gray and Osborne to come up with alternatives and their costs for the council to consider. Gravel agreed that Kaiser's situation is a priority. He said the driveway is below the existing storm drains and could be a future problem with water coming down Main Avenue from both directions. I'm Jeff Chu for i Fiber one News. We'll be right back. Bud Clary Ford Honda is proud to be an automotive leader in our area. Since opening our doors over 54 years ago, we have kept a firm commitment to our customers. We offer a wide selection of vehicles and hope to make the car buying experience as quick and hassle-free as possible. You can trust that we will get you into the car or truck of your dreams. Bud Clary has an experienced and reliable service and parts department that is open extra hours to help fit our customers' hectic schedules. Come for a test drive today at 1200 South Pioneer Way. We are a proud supporter of Columbia Basin Athletics. When you find out about the DQ five buck lunch, all this food for only five bucks, you gotta tell people about it. So I situated nice. Frosty drink next to this juicy grilled burger and fries. Did my Sunday? Mmm. Boom. I just dropped a five buck lunch gram on all my friends. Get ready for a little five buck envy. Michael, we like your style. The five buck lunch. Entree, fries, drink, plus a Sunday. Only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. Our next story is about a Moses Lake group's outreach toward those with substance abuse and other personal problems. Here's Jeff Chu with the story. Serve Moses Lake, a nonprofit agency primarily funded through local churches and private donations, accepts men and women with addiction and other special needs. It is an effort to build faith and hope so individuals can return to real life. 
Transformational Houses, a significant part of the mostly volunteer force that has served Moses Lake, take those with substance abuse and other personal problems off the streets and into a comforting home. Serve Moses Lake is an outreach branch of 23 local churches in the Moses Lake Ministerial Association. Tim Cloyd, a pastor at Moses Lake Alliance Church, is Serve Moses Lake's director. Serve Moses Lake combines the resources of several of our local Christian churches in the community and uh, so that we can help people in our community that are in need. For, for Serve Moses Lake, the clearinghouse part of it, we've seen over 3,000 families since we've begun in 2008. Uh, and that's mostly just Moses Lake uh, families. Gary Pierce, director for Transformation House, described the typical men the program helps. They come in pretty broken, not understanding. There's, there's things in life that have just broken down. And, and with, with a lot of them come out of prison or rehab or just off the street. Pierce recalled one man whom the program helped into his final days of life. He, uh, he came here. I met him. He was on the sidewalk over there by the housing authority in the middle of the summer calling out saying, hey, you're the guy I heard that will help me and I need food. And so we picked him up and he came and ate at the community meal. Then a little later, he got a hold of us through Sir Moses Lake office that he, he didn't have nowhere to stay and he was just gonna stay here for a couple days. And he ended up staying and, and uh, there was a big breakthrough in his life. He, he figured out that he needed, he needed the, the Lord, he had hope and he gave his life to the Lord. Um, started reconciling with his family, everything was really going good, and then, then uh, he passed away. Because of the drug abuse and the, the rough life, his body was just, a, the doctor said it was 100 miles of bad roads. Don Harris is one of the many who have been served by Transformation House. I uh, have had alcohol and drug problems, uh, was pretty much homeless, and talked to Pastor Gary. He brought me into the house. Uh, I had a 3.6 centimeter tumor of cancer on my liver, so I was in danger of, of really being done. Harris said the Transformation House has turned his life around. I have uh, an exit strategy, a plan on getting married in February. See the website at servemoseslake.org. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. We'll be right back. Six years ago, my dad began having issues with headaches, sore throats, and constant fatigue. He tried treating the problem with over-the-counter medications and lots of caffeine. Finally, he talked to his doctor who confirmed our suspicions. Dad had sleep apnea. He didn't like the idea of using a CPAP, but after trying it one night, he was convinced. We found everything he needs for a much better quality of life at in-home medical. Play of the game, folks. Manning throws. Touchdown. Hey, Peyton, what are you doing? Tossing the dough. Just like you said, do I throw one? For just $11, get Papa John's new Chipotle chicken and bacon pizza. That's right, only $11 for a large. Plus, try our new mega chocolate chip cookie, just $5. Nice and smooth. Peyton? The next story is about a retired cowboy turned dingo breeder. Here with the story is Jeff Chu. They're called dingoes, an Australian free-ranging dog breed with wolf-like features, and they are alive and domesticated in Afreda. Retired Montana cowboy and horse trainer Robert Hemby has been breeding and raising dingoes for nearly 60 years. He says dingoes are popular with ranchers because they are terrific livestock herders. He sells them locally to ranchers and as far away as Seattle, Mexico, and Canada. It only adds to the dog's value that dingoes can no longer be acquired from Australia, where selling or shipping them out of the country is now illegal. And Hemby says it's just another reason he keeps raising the rare breed. He has 19 dingoes of different ages at his home near Afreda. My first dingo, we bought it and brought it from Australia in 1955. And from there on, I've had dingoes all along. And then in 2000, right at 2000, I think in 1999, Somebody come to me and wanted to buy one of my puppies, so I sold it to him. 
Hemby says the dogs are unfairly maligned as not good pets, which made them hard to sell in the beginning. But he says those who have bought dingoes for $500 to $1,500 don't complain. Besides being loyal and protective of their owners, Hemby says dingoes are fast and fearless watchdogs. They can even herd bulls. Dingo people have the wrong ideas about them. They think they're a real wild dog. They're not. They are really the wild dog of Australia, but they're not wild. They're very intelligent, easily trained for anyone. Farm, ranch, home, in the city. I've had many people buy them in the city over in Kent, in Seattle, Everett, those places. It was the stock contractors for the Professional Bull Riders Association and the Professional Rodeo Cowboys Association that asked him to save the dingo bloodline for use in rodeo. He sells his dingoes to stock contractors for those associations upon request. Oh, they're the best. They're natural cow dogs. They're natural. It's just in them. It's built in them. Evidently, they're just born with it. A feed store in Moses Lake helps him sell the dingoes locally, but he can often be seen selling the dogs from his blue van at the Walmart parking lot in Moses Lake. The dogs are growing in popularity, and Hemby has sold a lot of them in recent years. Oh, goodness. Probably 300, if not more. I've got puppies in Canada. I've got puppies in Mexico. I've got puppies all over. Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, you name it. Nevada, and a lot here in the Northwest. To say Hemby loves his dingoes seems like an understatement. He pulls out one of his seven-week-old pups. Mm. Mm. Little boy. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Well, that wraps up our weekend edition. iFiber One News will be back on Monday at 5 p.m. with the latest news from around the Columbia Basin. Thank you for watching and go Seahawks.